Dang, I spent the last few months saying how much I dislike the iPhone 12 Pro, and because of that, I totally dismissed the 12 Pro Max from my brain. Like, it just straight up went out my brain. Well, team, I went out and bought one a couple of weeks ago, and in that time, my brain, it's been soundly chastised. This is a fantastic device that I shouldn't have been so stubborn about and given it a shot sooner. And you know what? You should totally buy one. So, uh, why is that? Let's find out. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Policy Genius. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Ooh, okay, let's pick up, let's pick up the, let's pick up the new shiny tech. I can't remember the last time that I felt so wrong about a device, be it phone, tablet, computer, etc. I normally keep a pretty open mind about all brands. It's funny that as somebody that routinely gets labeled as an Apple fanboy, that I dismissed an Apple phone. As this is a you should buy video, we'll be tossing all of that middle of the road, unbiased talk out of the window, and we're gonna be as biased as heck today. And I'm gonna talk about why the iPhone 12 Pro Max might be one of the best cell phones ever made. Addendum number two. No, I don't expect or actually want you to buy everything in these videos. This is just my way of getting my excitement across because there's too much tech negativity anymore. We don't need to belong to segmented tribes, everybody. It's a cell phone. Life will move on. Okay, enough of those boring disclaimers. Let's get to the reasons to buy this bad boy. And the very first reason that you should buy the 12 Pro Max is the battery life. Everything else, we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff today. Everything else is icing on the cake. Cameras, screen, processor, raw photos, all of that stuff is great, but it's an extra bit of great. The battery life on the 12 Pro Max, that's the whole cake. That's cake and icing that the rest of the icing gets put on. And wow, that cake actually sounds really gross because it's just like a big blob of frosting. Either way, I love the battery life here. I'm getting full days worth without reaching half power. And that's pretty huge for me. I've been mainly using a 12 mini since it was released. And yes, it's a great phone for about half the price of the 12 Pro Max. It's battery life is pretty meh. And when I mean pretty meh, I mean, I will always have to worry if I will make it through that full workday. Generally, I'll need to find some place to emergency charge it, or I'll need to bring an external battery with me to get through the day. The 12 Pro Max doesn't need any of that. And with as freeing as my M1 MacBooks have been, I don't bring charging cables or bricks for my laptop anymore because those computers will last for at least three days. Yeah, I figured that magic out. I still don't know how they did that. It's nice to not worry about my cell phone either. The 12 Pro Max is rated to the same 20 hours of battery life that my M1 MacBook Pro is rated to. I don't know if it's that great, but it does get me through a full day. And at the end of that day, I'm at about half. So I'd say 16 sounds more realistic than 20. But when you get to that long of battery life, we're kind of splitting hairs at this time. Trust me, this kind of life buys you a peace of mind that's worth its weight in gold if you are somebody that has a lot of meetings throughout the day or you handle very important clients and you don't have the time and you don't have the... You don't want to have the stress added to your life about your technology power levels. This is so good. Thanks again to today's sponsor, Policy Genius. Insurance might sound like a boring dad thing to think about and talk about. Well, good news, I'm the everyday dad and I'm gonna hit you with some dad knowledge today. You should always make sure to be properly insured. And that's advice that I'd give despite who is sponsoring a video. Luckily, today's sponsor, Policy Genius, can help you check off two very big insurance items with ease. They'll let you compare life insurance rates and save money in the process. Plus, Policy Genius is the marketplace and not the insurance company, meaning they can give you free, unbiased biased advice without trying to sell you on a specific company. And you could save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. We all think we are immortal and invulnerable, but after my motorcycle accident a few years ago, let me tell you, I'll never personally go without life insurance again. You've got to make sure that your family is taken care of in case something happens to you. And with today's message, you can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Head on over to policygenius.com slash the everyday dad to shop their market and start saving today. The next reason I would recommend buying the iPhone 12 Pro Max is that main camera. Holy jeez. The battery life is amazing. And if I could put it into an objective scale of amazingness, the battery life is over 9,000 amazing nits. That's what we will use as a unit of measurement. The camera would probably be sitting at around 
8,000 amazing nits. When I'm talking about the Maxxis camera, I'm specifically talking about the wide angle F1.6 camera. The ultra wide is cool. It's still an awful lot of fun. The 65 millimeter telephoto is cool and I have enjoyed using it, you know, getting some background compression, making the photos look a little higher quality. But the real achievement here is that middle camera. Apple made a couple of really big technical improvements to this camera. One, they used a larger sensor and the larger the sensor you get, if the megapixels stay the same, the larger the actual pixels will be, meaning you'll get more light on each, giving better low light performance, better dynamic range, better lots of things. Plus, they also included sensor shift stabilization, which in normal camera world generally gets referred to as in-body image stabilization. That's where the sensor moves around a little inside of the camera to smooth out shakes. This gives you more stable video but also lets you have slower shutter speeds when taking pictures, giving an additional edge for low light situations. This is no kidding, no kidding. The best cell phone camera that I've ever used. And it's not like, it's not like it's the best and neck and neck with something else. This is by far and away the best camera. The photos it takes are razor sharp and you can get very clean images in remarkably dark situations too. All hyperbole aside, I've stopped bringing my larger cameras with me for family photography unless I'm specifically trying to get some shots like my 85 millimeter prime or my 70 to 200 zoom lens. And that's the whole reason I bought the 12 Pro Max in the first place was I was going to buy a separate camera to carry with me, which meant I needed to carry the 12 mini, which I'm pointing at right now, and a camera, probably the Fuji X100V. That's just a lot of stuff to carry around constantly when I could just carry around a slightly larger phone. I mean, right? It was a good decision for me, right? If I can figure it out, you can figure it out, right? This was the best decision for me. And it's not just the physical camera, but if you wanna start learning how to process images after the fact, the new Apple Pro Raw ability, it's again on a whole other level. Normally when you take a raw photo, you're getting everything the image sensor saw but that's not always the most pleasing image right out of the box. So you'll get all of the ability to move and work with the picture, but sometimes you don't want to do that. Most of the times you don't want to do that. Pro Raw takes a raw photo, but it combines it with a photo that also has the AI processing that cell phones are known for. It gives you an image that looks fantastic, but also has a huge amount of latitude in your editing program. You can push and pull highlights and shadows more on the 12 Pro Max then on most of my larger cameras. And I have almost every single major brand of camera in my office right now. This stuff is wild. Wildly awesome, boom! That's a solid dad pun right there. Okay, the very next reason that you should buy the iPhone 12 Pro Max is the bigger size. Yes, I hear you smaller phone aficionados, I hear you, because I am you but hear me out. I don't really like the 12 Pro because it's a smaller phone, but it has the heft of a bigger phone. And that smallness leads to a denseness that makes it very uncomfortable to hold. But because of the extra size of the 12 Pro Max, it forces you, or at least it forces me, to hold it differently, which leads to not being able to operate this as easily one-handed as I can with my 12 mini or 12, which means I have to hold it two-handed. And because of that, you now have an extra point of contact all of my complaints about the weight are gone. This extra point of contact fixes everything for me. And when we are talking about cell phone weight differences, they're so small that when the phone is put in a pocket or a bag or something, you won't really be able to tell the difference between the two, except for the 12 Pro, which is too heavy to use single-handedly. I have very much enjoyed using and interacting with the 12 Pro Max, which is a big weight off my shoulders. Dang, another solid dad pun. It's a big weight off because I was actually pretty concerned about the size when I bought the phone. I was really hoping that I could just live with it and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. I wasn't planning on making the series of videos on the 12 Pro Max. It was like, I'm just gonna have to survive with this. It's gonna be okay. We're all gonna get through it together, Gary. But I have really enjoyed this. That's not to say that I wouldn't prefer all of this battery life, all of this camera tech, et cetera, in the 12 mini because yes, I would take a 12 mini Pro Max. That makes sense. I would take one of those over this if given the opportunity, but for what it is and how you use it, this is actually very good. And if you are skeptical, you're skeptical, you're like, Gary, you're not a small phone fan. You're a big phone fan hiding out. Just schedule an appointment at your nearest Apple store and check one out in a socially distant, you know, wear your mask, be safe, let's all keep each other safe, check it out in a safe way. I don't have too many more reasons to buy the 12 Pro Max specifically that aren't already reasons given about the other iPhone 12 line. And I don't really want to restate 
everything that I've said in previous videos before because that gets boring real quick. Not just for you, but it gets real boring for me too. So the last thing that I'd like to mention is a solid reason to buy this is the display. Yes, this kind of goes hand in hand with the size, but I feel the larger 6.7 inch display also makes this a far more versatile content consumption device. Bigger screens mean you can enlarge text, only if you need to. I'm not saying we all need bigger icons or we all need help, but each year it seems that I have to read that larger line on the eye check chart. And as stubborn as I am, I do like that I can see things clearer here. It also saves me on needing to not bring my iPad around the house if I do want to watch a movie from bed or the office because the screen is big enough to make that much better than trying to do the same on the 12 mini. It's not that you can't do it on the 12 mini, it's just that it's better in almost every single way on the Pro Max. The display doesn't have a high refresh rate, but the Retina XDR panel makes everything look so good and the phablet nature of this phone does make pairing it to a keyboard and mouse a little more manageable of a task without needing that external display like you do on the regular 12. Also, if you wanted a phone for creation tasks like photo or video editing, having the larger display makes manipulating assets in a video editor so much easier. Trying to wrangle audio files, text overlays, adjustment layers, etc. That's basically impossible to do on the 12 mini. And while it's not the easiest to do on the 12 Pro Max either, at least it's doable. That A14 processor will handle any of the new 10-bit codecs or the Dolby Vision HDR mode. It handles it so easy that you'd think this was a full computer that you carry around. Which, I mean, yeah, I guess it kind of is. The bigger screen does kind of make everything better. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Yes, this phone is amazing. It's pretty expensive too. It's pretty expensive too. But if it will save you from needing to buy an extra camera or buying an iPad, I think you could consider this one of the better values in the cell phone marketplace too. And I have no problem recommending this to you to buy if you are looking to upgrade in either the size of your phone or the generation of your phone. But if you are only interested in an iPhone for the operating system and you don't want or don't have the money to spend on this exorbitant device, good news. Apple has the 12 mini for about half the price or the SE from last year for even less. And you get most of what you get here on those phones. Dang, the iPhone, the iPhone line is just in a very healthy place right now. Thanks for watching.